Hello, this is the lecture on data analysis, and this problem and this assignment requires you to do a little bit more than the previous assignments as you're learning more in this class. So here is, are all the topics we're going to cover in this lecture, and I will post this spreadsheet um, where the assignment is so you can actually refer back to them because there's a lot of information on here. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the function tab. When you're doing functions, if you click on the function tab, it'll actually prompt you through the functions if you get lost. So you can click on any of the functions and it will kind of get you started. It tells you what you need to do, um, what you need to put in them. So it's a, it's a help. So that remember that the function tab, which is right here, will help you with all these functions we're learning. Sometimes you receive errors when you use functions. Here are the basic errors. and. You may find that um, this table isn't that helpful. I know when I build really complicated formulas, sometimes it's hard to tell which error message it really is. But for the most part, if you're trying to divide by zero, you get this div error. Um, when you're doing a VLOOKUP and you can't, that you can't find anything because either your VLOOKUP's wrong or you've misplaced the different cell references, you'll get the NA. Um, the name will refer to a formula text that Excel does not recognize, so maybe the, tech, the formula is looking at a cell where it needs to see text or it needs to see um, a number. The ref is that the reference cell doesn't contain any data, so if you're trying to do division by nothing, you get the ref error. And the value error indicates that a formula contains the wrong type of data, for example, text instead of numbers. So that's just a little table to help you out, because once you start building big formulas, you do get errors. There are several count formulas. There's the count, the count A, and the count if. The count A will look for um, cells that contain numbers that it uses to count. So it's looking for certain cells that have um, numbers in them. The count A function counts the number of cells that are not empty in a range. Um, I'm sorry, that the basic count will count what's ever in it. The count A is looking for cells that are not empty. And the count if is the most useful. The count if will count cells that have criteria in them. So I want to go ahead and show you the different ones here. So here's just a little example with a count A, a count if, and a count. Let's do the easy one first. The count will just count whatever's in the range. So if you look up here, it's counting A2 to A8. So you come up here to A2 to A8, and it's saying that it sees three things because it's counting three numbers, and that's what it was meant to do. The count if counts the number of non-blank cells um, in A1 through A8. So here it's saying count if A2 through A8 has the word sales in it. So up here, if you go to 2 through 8, I just hit my F2 key so you could see my formula. The only thing it sees with the word sales in it is one thing, so it produces a 1. And then the count A is saying count the number of non-blank cells. So they're between, um, whoops, between A2 and A8, there are six non-blank cells. So if I hit my F2, you'll see there are one, two, three, four, five, six non-blank cells. So that's kind of the count, and you're going to use this in this assignment. We're going to talk about concatenate and join. They, they do similar things. Um, one's a function. One is just knowing how to use the references. So if you come over to concatenate, what it does is it uses a function and it says add things together that are between um, the cell references and you can add commas and spaces also so this formula here is saying add together Alberts and Bob and make it a first and a, a last and a first name and put a comma between it notice that what I want between it has to be between parentheses so this has got his last name his first name with a with a comma between it and I had to put that between the parentheses I can get the same thing by joining using the ampersand, and I've been using Excel a really, really long time, so I always do it this way, and I forget that this concatenate function's out there. But it does the same thing, and notice there's no comma here. That's only because I didn't tell it to do that. I can do um, the comma by doing the same. Got to put it inside of quotes. And you just got to remember to put the ampersand between everything that you want. See there, it did it. 
So you can use either one. They both serve the same purpose. Why is this important? Lots of times you're going to find when you're using data that you want to do a quick VLOOKUP or a SUMIF or something and the data is in multiple cells or the data comes out like this where you have a last name and a first name. It's really meaningless for what you're trying to do. Just It's just a very useful function. The next is text to data. This is when you take data apart. So here, see how you got the names together. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and um, so I can take it apart. I'm going to use text to columns. And you can either do delimited or fixed width. So if you're delimited by a comma or anything, pick that one. You're going to pick comma, and you're going to say next. And it's going to take them apart. However, I had myself highlighted, so let me try that again. Let me do that again. Text, I'm going to do delimited. And I got comma. And from here on, you just want general and say finish. So delete it out. Um, you know, you can, you can do one cell text to columns and say comma, finish, and it goes ahead and sticks it right in the cell. So you have to be careful where you do it. I'm going to undo that. If you just highlight it and you don't care about the data left behind, just go ahead and highlight the data and say text to columns and say next it's going to overwrite what's already in that cell and say finish and see so notice that the joined one's gone. So you kind of just have to figure out what you're trying to do. If you want to leave that one, I would copy it and I would paste it and just leave the values there. And then from here, do your text to columns. That way your original is left. So you have choices. It's just a nice way to take data and take it apart. So we learned how to join data and take it apart. Now we're going to talk about um, Let's do the drop-down list next. Drop-down lists are really um, easy to use, and you don't have to um, do much other than to set a filter. So a drop-down list or a filter is the same thing. So you're going to highlight the, the title line or whatever you're trying to filter. Click on Filter. It puts these little arrows. And then you could say, I want to see all the Bs in the term. So you can unselect all and just pick the Bs. And there's your filter. So those become important. So that's a filter. Um, let's go back. Another thing you can use um, besides a filter is an actual drop-down box where you use data validation. So let's go into um, the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP, and I'll show you those inside here. The VLOOKUP is a really useful tool. This is a very shortened list of data. I grabbed it from a longer list. So if I look in my filter list where we were here just a minute ago, there's tons of data. I just grabbed this off the internet. It was a list of people's pay off of some college website. So what I did was I said, OK, I want to have a VLOOKUP of, um, of things that are you know, a certain dollar amount. So what I did was I said, okay, the average pay for a vice president, a director, a manager, a supervisor, a professor are these numbers right here. This is just made up data. It's just a little table. So I wanted to know what this person, this Albert's person, who's a VP, made in relation to the average. So I created a VLOOKUP. When you do your VLOOKUP, let's go back to the little point here, you have to put the lookup value, the table array, the column index, and then um, the range lookup or or faults. I'm going to show you. This is how you put this in play is what makes it work. So I'm going to come do it over here. Notice notice here it says EV lookup. It says B11. So B11 is the position. That's what I'm looking up. Then it says go to A4 through B8. So it's saying go from um, A4 to B8 and pick number two. And then if that isn't there, make it a false. So I'm going to type it off over here so you can actually see what this means. So I say EV lookup. And it starts asking me, where's your lookup table? So I'm going to say my lookup table is actually here because I just care about um, the VLOOKUP 
information. I'm not looking it up by name. Then it says, what is your, um, your number that your, actually, let me do that again. Okay, the first thing is the lookup value. So I'm going to look up the value that is in here. Then it says, what's my table array that I'm looking up? So my table array is here. Then it's saying, what is my um, column that I'm actually looking in? So if, if this is my table, this is column one, this is column two. If this were my table, this would be column one, this would be column two. It moves around with wherever you're deciding what you're looking up. Okay, so I'm going to look up the position, and I'm looking it up, up here, and I'm looking it in space two. If it can't find it, I'm going to tell it to put a fault in there, and that's where it got the, the 165. Now, can I copy this? Absolutely. Remember your absolutes? What you want to absolute is the table, not this, because you want the position to move as you copy it down. So what you're going to do is use your F4, and you're going to press on it and get your table stuck, absoluted, so that you can actually copy this down. Okay. The key to VLOOKUP is the first column of the table array needs to be what you're looking up. So if you're looking up position and you're trying to find it in here, this better be the first um, spot in your table. If it's not, it can't find it. That's the way the formula works. Okay. Then there's an H lookup. This one actually um, looks up information in a horizontal fashion. So here you have your items across the top, your prices, and your departments. So in here, I made a little drop down um, box here. And the way I did that was I highlighted the cell range. So from, from here, I'm going to do it for you. I'm just going to come over here and say I want to make a drop down box just off to the side. So I'm going to highlight what I want in my drop down box. And I'm going to say data validation. And I'm going to say make a list. And then in my sources, I'm going to highlight this. Then I'm going to say OK. And then my drop down box becomes um, wherever I stuck it. Okay, so if I have, let's just copy these down, let's just stick them right here. Okay, so if I want to clear, let me clear this one. Okay, here's my stuff I want to make in my drop down box. So I'm going to say data validation, and I'm going to say make me a list, and my source is going to be here. Then I'm going to say okay. And then my drop down box has it. So you can put it wherever you want. You can put the drop down box wherever you want it. Okay, so I created a drop down box. Sometimes I hide the data down here. So let's try something different. Let's just say I want A, B, C, D. Okay, and let's say that I want my drop down box to be right here. I'm going to say data validation, and I'm going to say I want a list, and then in here I'm going to put it there, and I'm going to say OK. Then there's my drop down box, and I can call this list. So you can do um, my title would actually be list. Then from here, here's my list. So you can do it wherever you want it. You can put a, a data validation table wherever you want it. Okay, so there's my data. So for, for this instance, um, I wanted item one. And my V lookup, I mean, I'm sorry, my H lookup is doing the opposite of the V lookup. It's looking up um, B9, which is here in table B3 through D5. So notice it's still the same concept. What it's looking up needs to be in the first range of the table array. So it's going from B3 to D5. Then it's saying um, it's going to the rows B10, which is where I'm in, and it's um, putting a, pri a price in there. Okay. So from here, this one's looking at rows B10 um, through B11, and it's still coming up looking at the item here. So as I change this to different item two, 
Then it's going over here to item 2 saying the price is 75 in its department B, etc. And then if I change it to 3, it knows to look item 3. So it doesn't seem very meaningful with a short little table, but if you had this huge horizontal table with 3,000 items, you could click on here and pick an item and it would bring the information back. So I don't personally use HLOOKUP as much as VLOOKUP, but that might just be the kind of data I'm looking at. But it's a useful function. Okay, so I taught you the drop down or the um, and the the filter, which you had learned a little earlier in the class. The V lookup, the H lookup. Let's talk about sum if. I use sum if a lot. I love sum if. Okay. Once again, here's that little data table that we I showed you. And keep in mind, the data table does not need to be inside the summary table. I'm just doing it to make it easy for you to watch me. Um, when you go to you do your homework, the the data table is going to be in a different sheet, and that works just fine. Okay, so the sum if is looking at a range to look up against a position to look up against a range to sum. So if you look up here, it's saying if B11 through B18, which is what I'm, my, range, my criteria range, is A4. So A4 is sitting somewhere in this criteria range, then sum it up in E. Okay, so if I look at this, I'm saying go find VP, go find VP and sum it up. And it did. There was only one VP and it was 185. Directors, there were two of them and it summed up the two directors, which are 214. This is a really cool function and I use this a lot if I don't want to use pivots. Um, pivot tables is what we're going to learn in the next lecture sometimes. I want the data to sit and I don't want to mess with it like I do with a pivot. So this is, this is stagnant, it's going to sit here and if I change my table then I need to update my formulas. But um, I find some if really, really useful. Once again, notice I absoluted the ranges of the position and the current pay just so that I could copy them down. Average if works the same way. Notice it's got the same position against a, a thing you're looking up, a criteria, against the current pay. So it's saying what's the average. So if you come over here to prove me that I'm right, my average is 107. And it did it in a nice pretty little table. So I'm going to have you guys do, do this in your homework too. Okay, I think locking rows and tables, I want to make sure you know how to do this because it's, um, it's really important when you're looking at data. You go up to view and you say freeze panes. I've already got mine frozen so I'm going to unfreeze it and then I'm going to do it again. Freeze panes. Then what happens is, is I, can, I can move but this stays where it is. And just a refresher, if you like split, um, you can use split too. And I know I taught this early in the class, but I want to make sure you remember how to use it. Okay, when you go to assignment four, you are, this is posted in Blackboard, you're going to do multiple things. So when you open up the assignment, save it with your first initial and your last name right away so that as you build upon it, you won't lose it. I just grabbed some data off of a website. Um, for you to manipulate in the assignment. So it has a, a year and a last name, a first name, agency position, total pay. It's just pay data like you would look at if you were a CFO or an accountant or an analyst looking at pay data. It's off um, a website, a college website. Perfectly um, shareable data. It's a government website. And then I have you go through um, creating a part one where you're going to freeze some panes, do a join, do a concatenate, and save. Make sure that you put your footers in your first sheet so that when you move it across and copy it, it stays there. In part B, I'm going to have you create a filter and enter um, um, filter down for atoms and um, save it that way. I want to make sure you know how to use a filter. And then for part C, um, you're going to use um, do manipulate the data and you do a, an average if, a sum if, and a count if. Part D, you're going to do a VLOOKUP with some certain data. And then in, um, you're going to save it once again and submit it. So I will post this website with the inform lecture information out there. This is a large assignment, you get, um, so please take your time and make sure that you really watch this lecture and try it on your own. If, if I just show you how to do it, it won't be as meaningful as if you struggle a little bit.
If you have any questions, send me an email. Thanks.